guys, I'm joking. I don't really do that. I'm probably going to get into trouble for saying that, but I will. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Dan Jackson and welcome to my channel, Dan's the Engineer. In this video, I'm going to be talking about preparation for your NIC EIC assessment. So I thought I'd do a little video on how I prepare, um, what you've got to expect and hopefully it'll help a few others. So what actually happens on the, the assessment? So you have to meet at your your office or you know if you're you know a one man band or you don't have an office you can meet at home it's wherever you keep all your information or whatever they usually come around at about nine o'clock something like that and you go through company procedures and paperwork you go through um, installation records of what you know what you're installing you go through your test equipment accuracy checks and calibration that kind of thing um, you go through your technical documents, so make sure you've got all the BS standards, um, various different guides, and then you go out and do a site visit. So first of all, I'm going to show you what I do when the engineer, the assessor comes round. I basically set up a little desk for him, uh, make it nice and easy. I have a lot of stuff electronically, so all of our um, installation records, all of our calibration records and things like that, and even my qualifications, they're all on the computer. So I set him up with a desk and he's got a little folder on there that he can dive in there and, and look at what he needs. So I put all the insurance documents and, and things like that. If you're doing this from your home, um, you can have this all prepared on a computer, on your laptop and, and whatever. It just sort of makes it easier in my opinion. So I'll show you the desk that I set up. So I, I put all my uh, all the documents on there and I set up the desktop here and I leave a little bribe um, just to make the day a little bit easier. Guys, I'm joking, I don't really do that. I, I'm probably gonna get into trouble for saying that, but I will. So on the computer here, nice and easy. I just set up a little folder and put all the information in there that is required. Not sure if you can see that well enough to be honest. So the first thing they're gonna check is your procedures. So make sure that you've got your public liability insurance and employees insurance. So again, on that desktop, I, I just put a PDF copy of that in there. Um, so that's nice and straightforward. Complaints procedure, um, you should have a complaints procedure in place. Basically, we just have a, an Excel spreadsheet with a date, a name, contact and details if anybody makes a complaint or anything like that. We don't have any. Our health and safety policy, again, we've got that electronically. We do have it on folder, like behind me, you'll see there's loads of files. So we do have it, uh, a paper copy, but also it's electronic. You can just sort of dive in there. Uh, we have various policies as well with our company, environmental, um, what we do with our waste. All of that is available um, electronically. We do it for all sorts of procedures, really, not just the NIC. So anything you want to see, they're all in there. It's nice and straightforward. I like to keep everything electronic. It just makes it easier that if someone wants to have it via email, you can just fire it off as a PDF or whatever you know document it is. Some people like to keep it a paper copy, whatever suits you really. However, just make it readily available. They want to see installation records. So um, a few years ago, I used to just basically make an Excel spreadsheet, put every installation we've done on it, whether it's sort of domestic, um, and whether we've done you know, minor works, or installation certificates or electrical installation condition reports, put it all on an Excel spreadsheet with details on there and ready for them to see. But actually, I've, I think that takes quite a lot of time. So what I've been doing in the last couple of years is we use the NIC EIC software, which is by click. That's what we use for our certification. So all of our jobs are on there anyway. We set him up on that. He can go through it date wise and look at what he wants. I do have a few jobs that I've pre-planned and called the client you know, a couple of weeks before to ask if we can have access if required. Then if you've done any domestic jobs, he can also go on to, we notify them online on the NIC EIC online um, website. So he can then look at the reference number on that 
online on our account and then go to our certification on the NIC EIC software. Bit of a mouthful, I know. One thing I should have said earlier is that in order to have the assessment, your QS needs to be available for the whole day. So I'm the QS for our company. You might have more than one. They all need to be available. At the start of the meeting, at the end of the meeting, the duty holder needs to be available. That is me as well. So it's all me. I spend the whole day there. But if you, if your QS is different to the duty holder, you have to make sure that the duty holder and the QS are there at the right time. That's quite important. So what, he, what they also want to do is uh, check my competence as such. So I... Again, I've got a file on our computer with all my qualifications, whether it's electrical, fire, emergency lighting, you name it. Um, I've done EV charge point um, course on that. I've done various different sort of manufacturer training and stuff like that. Anything that's relevant, I put down there in the file. And again, he can look at my qualifications to make sure that they're all you know in order. I mean, I mean, I've been QS now for uh, seven years, so I'm pretty familiar with it. They will want to see the technical reference documents. And we're talking about um, BS7671, Part P, uh, the ele electricity at work regulations and all the guidance notes um, that are relevant to for you to do your job. And also, if you do fire alarms and emergency lighting, you need to have the relevant BS standards as well. And the most up-to-date, uh, BS5839 Part 1 has just been updated, 2017. So I've got that. Again, I've got them all electronically. I do also use the IET um, service, so I've actually got the regs and all the guidance, guidance notes and a few other sort of documents, the on-site guide and a few bits and pieces, and I've got them all electronically on my laptop, but I do have um, paper versions as well. So I basically set up on um, the table and desk that he's looking at, he can look at anything we want, we've got you know all sorts of stuff, some of these are outdated though, got on-site guide, you know, you name it. Part P, you've actually got that electronically. That's a really old copy, to be honest. Old regs, I mainly keep this one just because I've got loads of notes in there um, and I don't want to get rid of them. So that is a pretty pretty heavily used book. The electric vehicle charge points to prove that we're doing them and you know we've got the information to go by. And all the uh, guidance notes that are relevant there. Uh, we've also, because we do PAT testing, we need this book. So, What's important is that you make sure you've got the up-to-date books. Jobs are good. Right, you need to prove what test instruments you're using to do your testing. So we've, we've got quite a few sets of testers. They all get calibrated. Unfortunately, not all the same time. We stagger it out throughout the year just because um, we have like a spare set. So when one goes off or whatever, someone takes a spare set and so forth. But um, so we set up a spreadsheet with the test equipment, who's got it, so which one of our engineers, um, the serial number on there, which is important, and a calibration date. And it's just basically a log of when it's been done and we tick off what month it's been recalibrated, who's got it. And we've also got records for previous years. So when one's been faulty, we note down when it's gone off for a repair or something like that. So it's, it's pretty straightforward how you reference that. But obviously, if you've got more than one set of instruments, which is quite possible if you're a bigger company or you've got more than one person, you need to make sure that you're doing this procedure for every single one of them. Now, one thing that we've been doing in the last sort of couple of years or so is accuracy checks. Now, what I actually do on that is um, I get the guys once a month, or I grab the testers, however we do it, once a month, getting back to the office and we test we do a various you know all the various tests on a circuit and we note down the readings every single month to see if there's any sort of um, differences if there's a major difference we might look into there might be something faulty the test equipment only needs to be calibrated every 12 months or one year but it's quite a long time really because you imagine it, if you've got a tester in the back of your van you're on site or whatever if it gets dropped or stuff like that you need to make sure that you're you know it's accurate as well because you know they, they can go faulty at any time you know they're not, they're not like bomb proof or anything and i plug it into this socket here so i plug it into this socket and do the various different sort of checks. If there's anything a little bit concerning or whatever, we send off the testers to be sort of uh, repaired. So once you've gone through all your office procedures, documentation and all your technical documents, it's then time to go out on site and look at the installation and look at the work you've been doing and check and reference that what you've been doing on site meets your paperwork. 
it's pretty straightforward so you need to make sure obviously prior to this that you've arranged access and your customers know that you're coming some don't mind it at all but what I always say to the customer is that the NIC EIC assessment is for their benefit they're making sure that what we have done is safe and meets standards so it's in their interest to let us come along and have an assessment I make sure that I've got all plant and equipment to do this you need to take enough stuff with you as if you're you're testing pretty much because that's what you're going to be doing on site so make sure you've got your PPE um, I always wear my steel toe cap boots but I also you know I take high vis hard hat I've always got that in the van anyway because I have to for doing site visits um, ear defenders goggles gloves you name it take all of um, all of that that you're gonna use pretty much to do your testing and then I've got my this is one of my testers that I use this is the the mega MFT 1710 um, so I've got all different sort of leads in there. There's loads of stuff in here like um, you know, I've got data testers, I've got battery testers, you name it. You don't need that for, you know, a lot of them are for sort of fire alarm and data stuff that we do. I've got a, a little proving unit, um, voltage testers, handy old things, and then just basic hand tools really. Now also what's important to have with you is your lock-off kit for safe isolation. You can't do safe isolation without lock-off kits. It's pretty straightforward. So, you know, we've got padlocks. Um, we've got all sort of different devices and, and whatever. So I take that with me and I always keep that in the van anyway. And make sure, very important, you've got steps if you need them. Then you arrive to your sites. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head how many jobs they pick. It's like, um, they want to see a variety of your work, don't forget. So I am keen to take them to like an EV charge point installation. I might show them domestic. And quite often, if you're doing testing, they want to see a test that you've done and then remedial works that you've done afterwards to make it satisfactory. So they're always a good one. I mean, we, we do loads of that. I've got a site that we do all sorts of work. So it might be installing commando sockets. Then we might install um, fire alarm supplies. We've done testing. We've done a, a full refurb of like um, a domestic premises within that sort of building so they're the type of places that I'll take them to because it gives them a big option and I'll take all the certification with me so when they ask to see a particular type of place make sure you print off the certificate or have you know a pdf copy so they can look at it because what they're going to do is they're going to ask you to test that circuit so if you installed it like a commando socket circuit for example nice and simple they're going to ask to, for you to carry out your test that you do for that installation so on our installation certificate, we're going to have all our origin details. They're going to check that. Then they're going to check, you know, your circuit type, um, your protective device, your conductors to make sure that it all references. Now, what you've got to make sure that you're going to do on your installations, but also that they check, they're going to check for things like, have you got warning labels? Have you got circuit charts? Have you got, you know, have you identified the conductors in the right places? They're going to check all these things. You should be doing it on your installations anyway. So you go out. You do what you've got to do, have a bit of lunch halfway through the day. Don't forget to bribe them with lunch as well. It's another joke. And then go through your installation. Then you come back. Your assessor may find um, some defects with your work. Hopefully not. And they'll either be minor or major. So basically, um, anything that they do find, you have to rectify. And, you know, it's in your interest to do so. Our assessment pretty much takes up the whole day by the time we've done a paperwork in the morning gone to sites had a had a look around obviously had lunch and whatever and come back so it's, it's a day affair if you're a domestic installer it's half a day assessment it's pretty much the same sort of procedure really i know a lot of people um, get a little bit nervous about their assessment assessment but it, it really shouldn't be nerve-wracking it should just be what you do day to day and if there's any issues you know they, they'll tell you so um, don't worry about it too much. Um, if you want any information, if you're thinking about becoming um, uh, NIC, EIC approved contractor, feel free, drop me a message and I'll tell you my experience and what we do in our procedures. But make sure on your assessment that you give them that tenor. I'm joking again, I'm joking again. I, I should stop this. I am going to get into a lot of trouble. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching my video. I hope it is helpful. Again, if you want to contact me about anything I've said in this video, by all means, give me a shout. Um, you can get hold of me on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook, or you can put a comment below. 
I'll always get back to you. So uh, thanks for watching guys. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.